Am I ready for the Game Awards? No. So whenever a year begins to come to a close, gamers begin to make their picks for their games of the year. You'll have your favorite game of the year, maybe some of your personal favorites in specific categories, etc. But none of that matters. The only picks that matter are the choices made at the most illustrious gaming award show of the year, of course, the Game Awards. At the Game Awards, you the player get to vote on a pre-selected group of games in various categories. This vote, however, is largely meaningless. Uh, no, I'm being serious. The fan vote only accounts for like 10%, at least this year. The real voting is done by a highly trusted group of influencers in the gaming world. None of which could ever possibly be making their decisions based on their ties to said developers. No, everyone here is totally legitimate as decreed by the Dorito Pope. So the categories and games have all been announced. So I figured we go through this as a group, check out the choices, and uh, share some thoughts on them. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's start with Game of the Year. Oh, okay. Actually, a pretty damn good selection. We've got uh, PUBG on there. That game is uh, playable, I guess. Persona 5, getting that recognition, well-deserved. Love that. Horizon belongs right up there as well for sure, but I've already done a video on this. My choice comes down to Zelda and Mario, and as all of you who watched my video on this exact choice already know, it's totally Mario Odyssey, obviously. Uh, best Game Direction which is uh, awarded to a game studio for outstanding creative vision and innovation in a game direction and design. I haven't played Wolfenstein 2, but including everything else, this probably goes between Resident Evil 7 and Zelda. Both of those games were really innovative for their respective series. And in the case of Resident Evil, it was uh, a much, much needed change for that series. You know, I think, I think I have to give this to Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7, honestly. It's a toss-up between that and Zelda, but man, I have to admit, this was a huge turnaround for the Resident Evil series that was, you know, drowning, to put it lightly. So yeah, Resident Evil 7, that's what I would say would be the best game direction. Definitely a course correction in direction. Best narrative. Okay, well, I played two of these games. <laughs> Everyone tells me Nier is awesome. I played the demo and liked it but just never got around to that one. So I can really only pick between Horizon and Hellblade, in which you know, I'd have to give it to Horizon pretty hard. Hellblade had atmosphere and all. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I guess that would be narrative to say it had like an interesting lore behind it. But in terms of you know what happens in the actual game, I, I gotta give it to Horizon. Here we go, best art direction. Right off the bat, what the hell is Destiny 2 doing in here? Somebody call Keely, tell him we got a mix up. That there's no way that's supposed to be there. Um this is a tough one though. All of the other ones are really solid, but man, I got to give it to Cuphead. That game is so amazing. And yeah, I could just I could just stare at it and not even play uh, and be totally mesmerized. Got to go with Cuphead uh, for art direction. Score and music. Destiny 2 is, is back. Look at it just sitting there. It's like, which one of these don't belong? Go home, Destiny. You're drunk. The four I've played are all amazing. I'd say I could narrow it down fairly easily to... Damn, maybe not. Uh, if I had to pick two, I would say Persona 5 and Mario Odyssey. Odyssey gets an edge, okay, because of the, all the 8-bit uh, the renditions of the music in the game. But dude, those Persona 5 tracks, they are legit straight fire. For music, sorry my Nintendo bros, but Persona 5 is taking my heart all day when it comes to score and music. Audio design, recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. Destiny 2, could you just leave us alone? You can't sit with us! So audio design was like the whole point of Hellblade, but eh... I don't think that gives it the award. I mean, it was good, and it, it, the whole game centered around it, but 
I don't think that necessarily means that it should get the award. This would probably go between Resident Evil 7 and Mario for me. That that sound design for the creepy immersion in RE7 is vital. But similarly, you know, the, it makes the Mario world feel lively and vibrant. You know, those sounds for Mario are just iconic. Zelda has good sound design too, but you know, it's it's much more ambient. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with Resident Evil 7 on this one, man. Call me a fanboy for Resident Evil, but that's the way I see it. Best performance. Ooh, the Uncharted chicks are in this one. You know, they, they weren't bad, actually. They were they were pretty good. I played through that uh, uh, Lost Legacy. But I think I'd have to go between uh, Senua and Alloy. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I haven't played Wolfenstein 2. Uh, you know what? Let's give this to Senua. I keep screwing her over in these categories. It was a solid performance, and it's it is really key to keeping you engaged. As you know, there isn't much going on in this game. It's very slow paced, and it's just like mostly her by herself as you kind of just pace around this world. You know, she doesn't have a world filled with giant Dinobots running around to keep you engaged in her game. So yeah, let's give it to Senua. Games for impact. Well. The only game I've played on here is Hellblade, so that's an easy choice. Life is Strange is uh, there. The sequel is up there. You know, I played the first game and honestly felt like everyone gushing over it was like a huge joke on me. I thought that game was terrible. Completely awful. The voices didn't even sync up. How do you have a Quantic Dream-esque story-driven title and your voice sync is off. I mean, it, I just, I don't know. I have no idea what people thought on that. I thought the performances were bad, the story was bad, everything was awful. I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. You're the bravest person I've ever known. You know, I want to kill that son of a bitch. Best ongoing game. So I guess this is like games that are just going to go on forever. So is PUBG actually out of beta yet? Like, is it even considered? To be a released game? I don't know. Last, I feel like it's been in beta, you know, ever since I've been hearing about it. And I don't know when the last time I checked was, but whenever that was, I know it was still in beta. Uh, out of these, I have to go with Overwatch. Since the phrase is ongoing game, I think that one definitely has the most staying power in terms of continuing to be <laughs> ongoing. People just love those characters. They love the, uh, the Overwatch cast. Diva, man. Every convention I go to, guaranteed, like 30 chicks are in that diva jumpsuit. Probably two or three dudes, too. Best mobile game? Who cares? I, I guess give it to Super Mario Run. I guess, sorry, Fire Emblem. No microtransactions for me. Best handheld game? Okay. Now this, this is a difficult one. To me, I can tell you straight up, it's down between Metroid and Ever Oasis. Echoes, uh, I liked it, but I don't know. I, I feel like I just wanted more of the standard Fire Emblem play. Ever Oasis, I gotta say, is sick, guys. If you haven't played it, you know, maybe because it's a new IP, you just didn't get around to it, you're missing out, seriously. But come on, my babe, she's up there. Samus, all day. We've been missing her for a long time, and even though this feels like a bit of an appetizer before Prime 4, I mean, it was a, a remake... Uh, it was amazing in its own right. Um, got me to pick up my 3DS again, if you follow me. I've been kind of bashing uh, a lot of these big game releases on 3DS. Sure, I would have preferred I would have preferred the game to be released on the Switch, or you know maybe be released on both platforms, but it was worth it uh, just to play that game. Best VR game. Uh, I've actually played most of these. Super Hot is awesome. No matter how you play it, Super Hot is awesome. Farpoint was surprisingly good with the whole gun peripheral deal, but yeah, this is pretty easy too. RE7 all freaking day. I've stated it in the past. Resident Evil 7 was the first time I really felt like I was I was playing an actual game in VR, not just some tech demo, you know what I mean? Best action game? What the fuck? Cuphead? I guess I guess that's an action game. You know, I, I would consider that to be more of a platformer. I don't know, I guess action works. I haven't played Prey either. I've heard mixed things about that. I do want to play it eventually, but you know, it's one of those things I'm like, you know, soon I'll be able to buy it for like 10 bucks, so I'm just waiting. 
So I guess it's between Neo and Cuphead for me, so Cuphead is my action game of the year, I guess. Um, I would know Neo was great, but, uh, you know, if I'm comparing these games, uh, for, I guess I'm on the outs thinking that Cuphead really isn't an action game, but um, I guess it makes sense. And it wins. <laughs> for me, it wins. Best action adventure game. Okay, well, I'm, I'm guessing there is no platformer category because Mario is here. Sorry, if we're using the term action adventure, it's Zelda Baby for sure. That game is the freaking embodiment of a gaming adventure, so no doubt Breath of the Wild. I'm assuming, let me just check real quick. Yeah, I guess there is no platformer category. Is that always like that? Was there, is, there not, is there usually not a platformer category? Maybe I'm just insane. Best RPG. Some solid stuff in this one. Again, didn't play Nier, <laughs> or Divinity 2 for that matter. South Park was entertaining, for sure. But, uh, sorry, Boy Band Simulator 2017 didn't really click with me, didn't even finish Final Fantasy XV, in fact. So yeah, it's Persona 5, for sure. An amazing RPG that actually makes you enjoy its long playtime. I mean, that's, to me, that's kind of the key of a great RPG. In, in my opinion, it should not only be, you know, this long adventure, but, but it also needs to find a way to make that length enjoyable throughout, which... You know, is where a lot of uh, a lot of RPGs tend to fall short. You know, like Final Fantasy 15. You know, some RPGs I put 10, 15 hours in, and I'm just like, eh, I'm not feeling this, and I quit. Persona 5, not the case at all. Fighting game. I haven't played Nidhogg 2, but I'm assuming it's a lot like the first. Definitely not going to be infinite. <laughs> Sorry, FGC. I know everyone says the gameplay is really awesome, but uh, no. Sorry, that game just. It looks so bad. ARMS is good, but I, I don't think it's on the level in terms of a fighting game as some of these other games, like Tekken and Injustice level. But between Tekken and Injustice is kind of tough. I love, I've always been a diehard Tekken fan, but, you know, Injustice 2 I really actually liked as well. Um, I'm going to give it to Injustice, primarily because of NetherRealm's focus on providing a ton of of single player content in their fighters. So often these games feel like it's, you know, it's like, oh, you can play in arcade mode or play multiplayer or leave. <laughs> Injustice has an awesome story mode, various other modes that uh, you can get engaged in single player wise with challenges and such. Plus the new gearing system in Injustice 2 was kind of fun, you know, given it that RPG element, you want to make your guys, you know, as strong as can be and look as cool as can be. I mean, it was great. Definitely deserves, in my opinion, Injustice 2, Fighter of the Year, Chicago, Shytown represent, by the way, another realm, so I hope that one wins. Best family game. Damn, Nintendo. Think about uh, maybe leaving some room for everyone else at the table? Yeah, I mean, poor Sonic over there, he's just, he's surrounded. Uh, I, I would look at this as best game to play with the family, that's how I'm going to interpret it. Uh, and when you look at it that way, I think it's pretty easy. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Can't go wrong with Mario Kart when it comes to group play. Even if it is a port, uh, you know, it's fantastic. Best strategy game. Jeez, there's a lot of categories, huh? Only played two of these. Mario Plus Rabbids was way better than it deserved to be, honestly. Uh, I Probably, as far in terms of surprise in quality, I think I was... Most surprised this year in the quality of Mario Plus Rabbids. It was a really solid game, but nobody does straight strategy better than XCOM, in my opinion. XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, that's the pick for me. Best sports and racing game. If Mario Kart was on here, I'd have a pick, but I've never played any of these games. Don't care. Next. Best multiplayer. Splatoon 2, no question. I don't even think that's an argument. Most anticipated game. They always, uh, maybe I just don't follow this closely enough, but uh, it seems kind of weird. The, the game we're so, the game we're most hyped for, uh, I guess. I will say, you see, this is what I was talking about in that uh, Xbox One X video I made about. Uh, I mentioned the Sony Storm that's coming in 2018. Look at this, three exclusives for Sony on the board here, uh, and I'm super pumped to play all of these games, honestly. But if you follow me, you know, for me. It's Monster Hunter World. Can't even consider the others. And I, 
you know, I'm pumped for God of War. I'm pumped for Last of Us 2, Red Dead. But, uh, you know, Monster Hunter, that's my, that's my jam. I can't wait for that. Best indie game? Come on. It's Cuphead. This shouldn't even be a question. Best student game? Never played any of these, and literally no one cares about this. Uh, this is what I call a bathroom break category. Trending Gamer? Well, uh, this is stupid. They have been doing this, though. I think I remember they've done this, like, the past couple years. It's like, you know, oh, who's the, the big influencer? And, as usual, I don't know who any of these people are. Best Esports Game? I don't know. Rocket League? Rocket League is fun. <laughs> it's hip with the kids. I, that's all I can... I don't get... What I'm saying, like, is this mean... What's the best game to play as part of an eSport? I don't know, because, like, none of the, the, the categories, what I'm assuming is, you, you should be, this isn't just the game that you think is the best. It's like, which is the best for eSports? So I'm assuming, which is the best for comp competitive play? Or what's the best to watch uh, competitively on, like, Twitch? I don't know, but uh, I, guess, I guess I go with Rocket League. People like Rocket League, right? Uh, best eSports player... What? Do people really care? Do people... Sound off in the comments if you have a favorite esports player. I don't care. It doesn't have to be up here. It could be anybody of all time. Who's your favorite esports player? Best esports team. No. Just no. Best uh, debut indie game presented by <laughs> Shik Hydro. Oh, is, is the Shik Hydro like muscle guy going to be there again this year? I hope so. So I guess that means the first game for these studios. Well, it's still Cuphead, you dummy. You can phrase this however you want. Oh, sorry, Slime Ra I didn't even see Slime Rancher was on there. Oh, well, I feel bad. Hey, Golf Story? Golf Story was a, a for. Oh, shit. Dang. Well, it's still Cuphead. Sorry. Best Chinese game. What? Really? What kind of racist trash is this? Legitimately, just an award for Chinese games? No other region gets something like this, just the Chinese. Uh, I don't know, that's pretty dumb. Another waste of a category, and no, I've never played any of these games, so whatever. And that's it. All my picks for the Dorito Popes Game Awards for 2017. Took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Uh, the choices were actually pretty damn good, I would think. I expected there to be a lot more, like, meh games that were just popular on here. Again, PUBG and, uh... Destiny 2, I kind of feel like are, th are those. Uh, I don't think either of those games is necessarily very very good. Uh, I just know that they're pop. PUBG, I know it's like, oh, 1 million concurrent users. I don't care if it's 50 million. I don't think that game's very good. I really think those games, those survival type deals that it really started with like DayZ, the, the mod for Arma. It's, I think a lot of that popularity has to do with the streaming community. They're, you know, I, it gets intense to watch because it's like you die once and then you're out of the match. It comes down to, like, only a few people. I get that, but I don't think as an actual game... I don't know. I don't think it's very good. But, yeah, the selection of games were pretty good, but, I don't know, some of these categories seemed pretty stupid. I mean, the best Chinese game, but no best platformer? No best pla... Because we had... Because, like I said, if we had Cup, Cuphead, Mario, uh, there's that Lucky's Tale game. Cra uh, wasn't Crash Bandicoot? Remastered. I mean, it was a remastered game, but you could put that in there. The Insane Trilogy, which didn't get any sort of nomination. I don't. I don't get why there couldn't be a, a platformer category. But I don't know. I guess I'm the idiot. But now it's your turn. Your votes are just as meaningless as mine. So let me know your picks in the comments. As always, I'm John Zakari, and thanks for watching. The Faker.